Um, my work is rooted in my ongoing preoccupation with personal history, displacement, exile, loss, memory, and war. I'm interested in the lines of destiny that shape our lives and the tidal waves of history that can sweep those lines away. I'm also interested in cinematic narrative and how meaning can be created and altered through juxtaposition and editing. In early 1990, I ventured for the first time to the almost forgotten terrain of my early childhood to retrace routes my family traversed as refugees at the end of the Second World War. Uh, we were remaining born Jews, uh, survivors of the Holocaust, who immigrated to the United States. Uh, uh, we immigrated to the United States when I was age 10. The world we left behind, the world of bombed out cities and trains and refugee camps, the smells and sounds and cultural values had no context or relevance in, in the new life we entered. Years later, as an art student in New York City, I would say, oh, we used to travel a lot to abbreviate a past too charged with suffering and too complicated to remember. Excuse me. This work is a product of seven journeys over a 10-year period. The sequence is not chronological, but designed to read as a single journey interspersed with self-referential images, as if they were a series of flashbacks to counterpoint present reality. Um, the work has evolved and changed over the years. In 1996, it started off just as a photo project, and in 1996, I started to write text for, uh, that consisted of four personal essays about my explorations of my history against the backdrop of post-communist Eastern Europe. Uh, the uh, texts were called, uh, they were Crossing Boundaries, 1990, Paramnesia, 1994, Chernobyl's Diary, 1996, and Long Distance Traveler, 1998. Um, eventually, uh, this was a, an age when everybody was writing memoirs, and eventually I decided it was kind of boring to write a, yet another memoir. So what I did is I chopped up the text into smaller paragraphs, that they were symbolic of the whole. And I will read you a few of these paragraphs to go along with the photographs that I show you. Um, the, I, the, I have about 40 paragraphs accompanying different, different, um, te different images, of which I selected about seven to present to you in, in, in the interest of, of time. This long-term project was supported and made possible by various grants and fellowships, including three ArtsLink grants, two New York fellowships for, uh, for New York Foundation for the Arts Fellowship, Art Matters, a re a residences at Lightwork in Syrac Syracuse Kinsler House in Vienna, Virginia Center for Creative Arts, and Anderson Rats Art Center, among others. I'm very grateful to Helene Black and May May for inviting me to take part in this exhibition and conference and delighted to have the opportunity to visit Ilya Kapodienberg. So I will, uh, this image, so I will start by reading the text. Uh, this is called The War Game, Czechian, Poland, July 5th, 1994. The airplane in this picture is a model P-38 bomber that I assembled from a kit in my kitchen table in upstate New York. I brought it along on my circuitous journey through Central and Eastern Europe to replay a recurrent nightmare of my childhood years. On this particular day, my train is crossing the Oder River from Germany into Poland, a trip I wouldn't have thought possible a few years before. In Eastern Europe, they refer to Jews as the, quote, roots people, because since the fall of communism, so many of us have returned, so many of us have come back to explore the lands of our ancestry and reclaim our heritage. Quote, memory is the source of liberation, as forgetfulness is the root of exile, close quote, said the Baal Shem Tov, a wise old rabbi of the 19th century. So, and here we start the journey, see what I think? Oh, okay. This is flight 
4787. I won't tell you all the titles, so I'm not all of them have text. So I would just kind of. And this is my outgoing flight from. Uh, a lot of people think it's a World War II era um, airplane, but in fact, it's a shuttle flight from Kennedy to Syracuse Airport. And that's on that flight, 40, uh, flight 4878. And this is the area where I'm from, Chernovsky up there. It used to be called Chernovitz, and that's where I was born. And I brought with me on my first journey, I brought with me a, this small photo. This is a small photo, but, uh, an identity photo from my displaced person's paper as a kind of connection to the person I was then. So. And this is from Prague to Berlin. 1994. There again, I use that photograph as a as a signifier and a, to kind of contextualize, contextualize myself in the landscape. <laughs> and here I'll read you another text. And this is Prague, Czechoslovakia, May 5th, May 19th, 1990. I'm witnessing history. Last night, I stood in a crowd of 20,000 gathered to celebrate the Velvet Revolution. I didn't understand a word, but the people around me seemed enthralled. So Jana, Mar Martin, and Teresa tell me that not that much has really changed. They say that the communist is still in power, and the Stasi is still snooping around people's private business. Jana's husband was a writer and radio broadcaster. After he spoke out against the Russian invasion of 1968, he was never able to find work again. He committed suicide in 1973. Wouldn't you be amazed if you were alive today to see Václav Havel in the presidential seat and all of Prague watching CNN tonight? This is on the train. I took many, many trains in many directions, and uh, this one happens to be from Berlin, a long uh, train ride from Berlin to uh, to Bratislava. And this is from Bucharest to Cluj, 1994. This is uh, Prague Station, 1990. This is. Uh, in Chernivtsi, this is my, uh, in my hometown, it's a small synagogue in the neighborhood we once lived. And this is Sarajevo in 1999. I have a text with that, but I didn't bring it. I didn't bring all my texts because, well, I didn't think there would be time for it. But this is a bombed out building where you can see that people are living. You can see the clo clothes hanging and people are, are, are living there. And this is an old cemetery in Vienna, I also didn't bring the text, but I'll just tell you briefly that this cemetery was vandalized during the start of the Nazi era, and the Germans dug up some of the corpses and took them to the Natural History Museum as examples of the former Jewish race. And this is Bucharest, 1994. And this is Cluj to Timisoara, 1994. <laughs> Uh, in Poland, this, uh, uh, Romania. This is uh, a journey from uh, Amsterdam to Frankfurt in that same time period. This is the uh, Baltic Express in 1990s with East German couple. This was the first time in 38 years that they were able to leave their country. And they were very, very happy. Everyone in 1990 was very, very happy in the East. And this one is called The History Lesson. And it's from a video that was shown to us in Terezin, Terezinstadt, at the former concentration camp, about the Nazi era. And it's a, it's a video, I'm sitting in the audience. And this is the, um, this piece is called The Remains of the Tree, and these are the members of my family that survived the Second World War. Uh, this is called The Past Lurks in Shadows. Some of these pictures are, are constructed and set up as uh, reflections in my kitchen window and at, at home. I seem to be missing a slide because I took it off the other. 
This is a self-portrait on the remaining Ukrainian border. This was when I was going for the first time to my hometown and I took the, uh, the train from uh, Bucharest to, um, to uh, Chernovsky, uh, uh, Chernovitz originally, and it was a 16-hour journey. We had to spend six hours on the border because they had to lift off the, each car from Romanian tracks and put them on, the, on, on, on Ukrainian tracks. It was an anti-invasion tactic. And this is from Graz to Vienna, 90, uh, 2000. Uh, the, uh, this is from Warsaw to Berlin, 1998. Uh, uh, Berlin to Amsterdam. Uh, this was from Budapest to Berlin. Uh, this is the Baltic Express in 1990. Uh, this is also from Budapest to Berlin. The same train. Uh, this is from Cluj to Timisoara. I've given some of you postcards where I've coupled this image with another one from that same journey and made a diptych out of it. As I said, my work kind of evolves and stuff like that. I'm sorry that I seem to be missing some of the images that correspond with. Um, Ah, there is one, okay, I missed another one that, that would have been good to read. So this is Paul and I at the Jewish Cemetery in Cluj, Romania, May 24th, 1994. We met in Bucharest, a busy, a busy, confusing airport where we had trouble finding each other. Faces streaming by for over an hour before hers came into focus. By then I panicked, a childhood fear of abandonment playing itself out wondering what to do if she didn't show up. There wasn't enough time to take that photo booth photo I planned. Two sisters arriving at the old homeland, smiling at the camera. My heart beating with a mix of awe, fear, joy, confusion, sadness, triumph. And here I thought to myself, I've made it. Tears welling up, but suppressed so as not to appear too emotional. I can still picture the harshness of the fluorescent lights and the maroon uniforms of the customs officials, and me saying mutsumes and complacere to practice the remaining words I'd learned from the Berlin State. We clasped hands to acknowledge the momentousness of this occasion. There we were, together, treading the grounds that our forefathers and mothers had tread before us. And this one is uh, Yash, Romania, May 23rd, 1996. A bit of luck that Gabriela and Mihai offered to take us to Jewish cemetery because on our own we'd never have gotten in. The old man at the entrance categorically said that with the, quote, administrator away, he is forbidden to open the gate. But Mihai slipped him a few lay and told him that I'm a photographer from all the way from New York. Oh, thank you. So he made an exception. They wa waited as I walked around. Old gravestones and weeds and wind. These concrete bunkers hold and commemorate the victims of the death trains, a killing spree instigated by the Iron Guard in June of 1941, in which over 10,000 Jewish men, women, and children lost their lives. In the background are the hills and silhouettes of new buildings against the gray sky of the drive back, we are silent. And this is Sarajevo from the, uh, from the vantage point of the Jewish cemetery up on the hill. And there also I have some text that I did not bring. So this is just a tease. I'm telling you what I'm not giving you. And this is another uh, old Jewish cemetery in, in uh, Vienna, where I spent three months on a residence in 2000. And um, I have a text for this one. This is uh, the Jewish cemetery in Chernivtsi, my, my hometown, which um, was, I know as Chernivtsi. It was a Jewish 
uh, German multicultural town before the war where uh, many nationalities coexisted. It, it dates back, just now I was there, and it dates back 600 years to the, uh, to the uh, Ottoman Empire and then to the Austro-Hungarian Empire mm -hmm. and then the building of nation states when it became Romania and then became part of the Soviet Union and now is part of the Ukraine. So this is really transition because people never left their house but their, their nations changed around them. And I, I went there just now on my way here because I was celebrating the uh, 600th anniversary. I thought it was in the neighborhood and I should stop by. So anyway, this is, this is a text from uh, 1996. And it's um, Jewish Cemetery, Chernivtsi, Ukraine, May 18, 1996. Horia seems a bit cross and resentful to be traipsing around an overgrown old cemetery in the heat. He wants to know the meaning of some of the symbols on the tombstones and finds it odd that I can't tell him. He also finds it peculiar that I'm not religious. In this part of the world, there's been a revival of religious faith even among intellectuals. Uh, where am I? A reaction perhaps to previously enforced secularization. There's a, sub, a, sub, a subtly complex rift between us here, and I don't really want to get into it with him. I have no absolute positions to defend. In my daily life in the United States, being Jewish doesn't have to be the topmost layer of my identity. But here, where I'm confronted by the ghosts of the past and the vacuum left by the Holocaust, it gives it a whole other meaning. And this is Chernivtsi, this is uh, um, the town where I just visited, but this is a photo I took in 1996. It's a, it's a beautiful city, it was never bombed, it has a lot of medium steel architecture and, uh, and very nice. And when I went there in 1996, it was, uh, there was, um, it really, it was like, I don't know, any of you know what Macondo is, the, uh, from the uh, novel of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, it's one of these towns that kind of forgot, it was really a bubble from the past, this beautiful place that had almost no relationship with the global world. And, uh, and now when I went back 12 years later, of course, the internet cafes on every corner and bancomats and, uh, and nice too, because people have a right to be connected with the, with the outside world. There's no reason why they have to be sort of a museum of the past for the rest of us to drop in. And uh, so anyway, uh, I, I look forward to developing my film and seeing what, what kind of images I got this time. And this is from the um, uh, Romanian-Ukrainian border from 1996. This, uh, these this image is my mother, my sister, and I from, uh, from the DP camps in around 1946. This is from uh, 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 Warsaw to Berlin in 1996. That seems to be it. I think my, uh, my presentation got a little bit abbreviated because, um, because of the difficulty with the, uh, the PowerPoint. I, have, I don't know if I have any time left, but if I do, I would like to show uh, a project that I've been working on now. Do I have any time or am I out of time? Am I out of time? I'll go downstairs then. Sure,